taking all that stuff we've been talking about for over a year this past year and we're just like putting it to action right put the rubber to the ground right and just create that momentum and really pull it all together and see how all these things play out when we are actually trading Yeah, man. Welcome, guys. Thanks for joining. This is Glenn and Ree from Holy Trading Academy. Our mission is to help cultivate traders and all people alike who are interested in the markets and giving them the knowledge and the experience. And by doing so, we do we put on this call for Trading Topic Tuesdays for you guys, where we talk about anything and everything trading. And tonight, you know, it's going to be a continuation part two of. Our traders lab call where we're going to be looking at the uh, live charts uh, talking about a little about a little bit about journaling talking about just the current events what's going on market sentiment you know the whole spiel um, yeah I have I have my, my uh, laptop because I'm having trouble loading my MetaTrader 4 onto my Mac so I do have a PC I don't discriminate I'll just stick to Mac, <laughs> but um, I'll be sharing that later with as we dive into the charts, you know. But you know the the whole idea for this Traders Lab is to just take all the information, all the, the videos that we've done, all that we covered, you know, risk management, psychology, all the different things, fear, greed, eagle, how to improve your edge on the trade and approaching the markets what to look for all the setups we're putting taking all that stuff we've been talking about for over a year this past year and we're just like putting it to action right put the rubber to the ground right and just create that momentum and really pull it all together and see how all these things play out when we are actually trading you know because it's a lot it's a lot uh we're, we're you know you can compare us to like athletes not the you know we ain't physically active but mentally we are focused and sharp right and so we're taking all that putting it to the test in the market seeing what um how it's done and it's essentially like a, a over the shoulder type of trading where you could just watch what we go through what we look out for uh, when entering these markets you know because i'm a visual learner i think reed's a visual learner right so that's a way to um learn essentially right so when i when i started trading it you know i didn't have too much access to people like this traders like this who have been who just like hey open open book look at what we do you know i'm not we're not we don't we're not trying to promote a black box type of system we have it all laid out very simple um, it's no secret, right? There's no new, brand new, top secret systems out there anymore. You know, it's it's kind of been done, I think. Unless you're uh, Jim Simons when his Renaissance fun quant super smart people who just have like hundreds of coders and engineers under his pay payroll. You know, different deal, different deal. But um, last week we covered over the markets. We took some trades. Um, and we can just go over some of those tonight. Um, but yeah, we, we kind of just walk you through the whole share, the whole thought process, man, of just, hey, what do we see? If we're not in the market, here's what we're looking at. Why, what do we see? Okay, is there a probable, you know, trade there? And if there is, then we can go ahead and execute, then walk you through. Here's my plan. Like before I even execute the trade, I should have plans A, B, C, D, you know, like, hey, if it does go my way, if it doesn't go my way, if it goes my way, then it pulls back what happens, or if it goes immediately my way, what happens, you know, we should be prepared, um, and we always try to say that your trades should always end in four different outcomes, and that's going to be either a small win, break even, small loss, or a big win, okay? You see what's missing there? Big loss. You don't want that. <laughs> okay, so four outcomes. If you're taking notes, that's, that is the thing you want to be focusing on. Because if we are able to, and I've said this in our other calls, when we're approaching the markets, there's a lot of uncertainty, right? Oh, Reed, where do I get in, yo? Like, there's all this stuff going on. Where do I get in? And 
if you know the four outcomes of the trade you're going to take, then that kind of deletes that uncertainty, right? So with that being said, man, Reed, you got anything to add to that, my friend? Silly me. There you I go. was going to say, um, yeah, you're like, when to enter the trade? I was going to say right now, if we could jump right into the charts, I'll show Let's you the uh, position I'm looking at. But uh, yeah, so it's just a little overall trader's lab. It's like a little more kind of laid back, more nonchalant, not so um, scheduled, I guess, as far as like how we usually do. But anyways... So I entered in Kiwi Cat. I wanted to, if you guys remembered last week, I think we put Kiwi Cat on the watch list with, along with Dollar Swiss. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> what happened here is a quick loss. This came out to a, uh, so this is how I will label. Oops, no entry. No, it was a loss. So I label it like this. So how much did I lose? I lost like point, it was 0.5% on it. So it's like, uh, I'll show you guys later how I calculate that. So it's 0.5% loss on this got closed out, held for 33 hours. I find that out by if I don't have like a trader's journal to automatically pull that data, I could use the tools on trading. Um, you could you could see my charts still, yeah? Yeah, we could see your charts. You're good. And you could hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Better? More better. Okay, More cool. Better. So anyways, um, so this is Kiwi Cat. I got out, taken out for a small loss. I held it for 33 hours. The way I know this is I use the ruler tool on the left side. And I just measure it to when I, when it closed out on me. So it was around 32 bars, 32 bars from entry. So it was right here. Oh, it, no, it was 33. So here, ruler, click on my entry. This is, oh my gosh, ruler, entry, measure, and it's 33 bars. So a day and nine hours. So that's how long I held that. It's kind of junk because it's a loss, right? So that the data will show that I held my loss, this loss in particular for 33 hours, which is, you know, my average holding time for a loss is a, is three to four hours. So it is a bit longer loss, but it is what it is. That's part of the plan. The reason why it didn't break down into the downtrend or uptrend is because we're overall in a daily bear trend. So I went in this market knowing that this was a reversal move. So immediately I accepted that if, price moved against me, then that's fine. It, it is what it is. And, and as traders, we just move on. But it was all my probabilities was there as far as analysis broke break out of a descending channel right here. Um, broken above EMAs, strong bullish momentum with the four hours. So I mean, it was all there. It's just it didn't work out. It's one of those trades. But I'm looking at this one now I, I covered on the watch list. If it starts breaking down like it is right here, I would re-enter because it's an overall, this would be a continuation play. This is an overall uh, bear momentum. And so the reason why I want to enter here is because it's creating lower lows. And the reason, uh, the point at which I, I wish I was at the charts was right here. So this would be like an entry point right here. I don't know how, you know, named it that, you know. <laughs> so that one right here, this would be my entry for, for this but right now as glenn was giving that beautiful introduction i was trying to place this trade live in uh um kind of like how we did last time but also i want to make sure that i'm in my right mindset so i'm not going to rush that trade i'm just gonna let it play out um and enter within the hour okay as far as my second position dollar swiss this one i've been looking at all week and even since the end of last week but I didn't get into this position yet. The market didn't enter me, but the weight's just consolidating here. So this entire area, when price just hovers up and down, it's not creating a higher high. It's not breaking down to create a lower low, and it's not bringing up above its most recent high. That's called a consolidating market. So I'm just going to circle this entire area so we, we kind of know visually what we're all looking at here. So if you look at the bottom left, four hour, that entire area, it makes sense, right? You got some strong momentum and then it's just consolidating or correcting there's many names for the exact same pattern here um, but here at hta or what i'll call it is correction or consolidating market and so it's a little slow right now as far as dollar swiss goes and i like it to me it, it's just revving up for a continuation short it didn't create a higher high on the daily so to me uh, i'm liking how it's it's looking as far as a uh, bear momentum goes and other than that that's the only two main ones I'm looking at. I'll let Glenn cover whatever trades he's looking at while I place this Kiwi CAD trade right here. 
and uh, make sure I risk appropriately. And then, uh, yeah, Glenn, I'll hand it over to you and then we'll bring it back and we could just scan through all the charts on what I'm not looking at. Cause I didn't have a lot of time today to actually look at the charts. So it'd be nice to yeah. show everyone like how, like I'll just blast through them real quick, real quick. Your, yeah, Kiwi, yeah. your Kiwi CAD, right? So at the beginning of the week, you had a long bias, but you know, you knew the bigger trend was, it was down, right? And oh so, yeah, absolutely. Um, it, I think, how did how did you just manage to just flip your position? You know, was it because you had that uh, expectation already? You Practice. Know? A lot of losses. <laughs> a lot of fighting my ego. <laughs> um, how do you pick your trades? Oh, great question. Okay, so how do you pick your trades? Um, well, I'll go over that after Glenn covers his. Yeah. Um, but because we're yeah, it's really that's a great question. I love it. Yeah. Um, we'll, park, we'll park that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll park that there, and then uh. But okay. how did I switch my bias so fast? Honestly, it's just through experience and experiencing that the market's not after to get me. I'm the one making the decision. So if I get mad at what the market's doing, I'm really getting mad at myself. And that's just ridiculous, <laughs> you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. And so you just, I wish, yeah. But, you know, it's hard too, because I will admit after that, I took it for the loss. I'm like, after that for, oh, sorry. Let me pull my screen up one more, just real quick. Right here, even if I was at the charts, I asked myself right now, like, would I actually have placed this tr position? Because that's a tight stop loss for my my strategy, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, um, yeah, that's a, that's it's something I'm still battling or handling or having to deal with. But, like, I'm going sh short bias now, which is a, mm -hmm. it's a testament, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, for sure. You can see me. Oh, I, wait, I want to say one more thing, too. It's like okay, the way go. you could I I do am able to switch biases is just through back testing, man. Like a lot of knowing that my plan, I trust my plan. Like, OK, if, if it did this, then it's going to do that. Then, OK, I know I, I'm, I have an edge still. So I think that's partly is like really having confidence, knowing your plan and having confidence in your plan. Like those two go hand in hand. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But sorry yeah. man take it away dude take oh, that's it away. good <laughs> that's good that's good okay let me jump let me go share the screen here so okay good good so i got the metatrader app up right here metatrader 4 um one of the platforms we use currently um just entered into this uh kiwi kiwi dollar new zealand dollar versus us dollar let me uh situate my screen here okay Okay, so can you zoom in. Okay, so this is what I see. So this is an hour, uh, four hour chart right here. We've been in a little bit of consolidation phase, you can see. But what on this recent breakout, um, so this previous low at, where's my cursor? This previous low on the four hour, we have 0 0.629. That's a level right there. Uh, recently, I think today we broke that level, so that triggered a short um, type of entry for me. And then, um, if you guys have questions while we're going over, just type it in the chat, guys. We'll, we'll definitely answer it. Uh, so yeah, on the daily, I like to start out with that. But you could see that price has been has popped up, come down, and then it's trying to pop up again. Um, but you can see that there isn't much momentum on the bullish side so definitely looks as you can see although the bigger move has been on the bear side shorting so i'm just going to be rolling with that and on this trade it is a smaller i am entering on a one hour um chart right now and and currently it's in in profit so i do I'm entering it based on my, a plan of a swing trade. You know, I'm looking to hold this trade for about a few days, the rest of the week maybe, until the, the tr um, move plays out, you know? And so I'm going to go take my, um, my risk 1%, going to go for 3 And, you know, when the trade hits, either as a loss or a win, I'll be out of the trade. You know, that's just one of them. Um, so... That's what I see there. Euro yen. This guy has been nice and popping. So we can zoom out to a daily. So it's been on a nice move since at the end of February. You can see it's just chugging along. But 
price, you know, with this big bar right here took out a lot of positions or people covered whatnot. Um, then it broke up again, you know, and it's chugging. Then it pulled back deeply again. So I think I rolled this. I think I had a position a few months, uh, maybe back in May on pound yen. You know, a lot of the yen pairs have just been moving, you know, and so um, I've rolled this part of the trend on the pound side, pound yen, not this particular uh, pair. And so pulled back, exited me out, took a nice little, I think it was a 2.8 win, a uh, percent win um, back in May. Now what I see that the momentum started to come back up, you know, there is a level to look at right here on the daily because that is a previous high of the last, um, yeah, the previous high of where the price was last. And so of course, what we're seeing is a reaction off of that price level. Um, but right now, since I've entered in it, you know, right now, I have eliminated all of my risk on this particular trade. What I did was just move the stop up. I'm, I'm going to risk all this paper profit up here to stay in the trade. You know, I'm anticipating the trade to continue on. But if it does go totally against me based on that level, then, you know, um, I broke even maybe a very small profit, you know. So I have a few positions in there that's just going um so that is the plan for this euro yen trade it's looking good so far so what is the other one i had um earlier i got stopped out or i just manually closed uh, my gold trade it wasn't doing too well i like this pop-up right here back in i think last week june yeah last week it was a nice pop-up about 18 1858 and then price the bull uh, momentum just died down, you know, and so I saw this consult sideways action and it just it was just a slow drop. So I just took my cut my losses there and then um, awaiting for a new entry into the market. So one more trade I am currently in is the NASDAQ 100. Let me zoom back out. So this is, you know, representing the NASDAQ. Um, it's been on a nice bear move over 20 percent down from the peak of beginning of the year and so you know we did a nice three-day pullback little run a bullish run but i'm anticipating it to come back down or break new lows because i think what we're going to have on when tomorrow we're going to have the test of test testifying of powell in front of the senate wednesday thursday yeah wednesday um, thursday Right. Nothing really comes out good when you testify in front of people, right? <laughs> Generally. Well, I don't know. Who knows? I'm not speculating. I'm just going off of the, what the price is. I'm going off the momentum. I'm going off of my plan and my edge. Um, so I just literally entered into this one and just going to let this play out. I got the stops in ready to go. And... Um, yeah, I'm just going to let the trade play out. I'm looking for a 3 to 1 as well on this one. But um, yeah, like you said, USD Swiss is looking good, man. We'll see how that one breaks out. Um, yen. Oh, I forgot. The, um, I just entered into this USD yen position uh, because, dude, it's just making new highs, man. Chugging along. It's on the weekly. Yep, new highs, 136. It's going to get, you know, if you're going to make it to Japan soon, but it might as well, it's going to be a good time to exchange that yen. They like cash. They still a cash country, man, and they hate tips. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, facts. Yeah, they like, they like their cash. So if you got to go exchange your yen, it's a good time, man. It's a good time. So that's what I could see. Uh, riding the, the trend going up, I do have my stops in, ready to go. We're risking 1%. Um, so I got, you know, a few trades there, just going to let those things roll, staying disciplined, sitting on my hands. I mean, it's always tempting. Like that's my issue. Whenever I just keep on looking at the charts, I always find a, a, a reason for me to enter, man. Um, you know, so that's the plan for this week. And I'm going to be, you know, updating you guys, whether how these trades play out in that, um, you know, but going back to, did you enter the trade already? 
Yeah, I did. I got into okay. Kiwi Cat. I mean, it's not live. I just placed entry orders. Oh, entry so order. I, I wait for a price to take me in and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And more. so I, I enter a lot, just market, you know, which is immediately yeah. jumping into. So what that is, you know, for those, um, you got but different orders to get into the market. You got a limit order, price entry. Like I want to get in a hundred bucks no matter what. And price is at 120. You got to wait for it to get get to 100 then it's going to get you in if um i see it at 120 um, i hit market it's going to hit me at maybe 121 depending on the spread or 120 if i'm lucky then i'm in, i'm in i'm out of automatically and the put the broker is just going to push the order and so um those are two different types you know and it all dep- goes back to your personality your style of trading what you're comfortable with um, you can use any type of order, you know, you just got to go get in, get in, right. Whatever is comfortable for you. For sure. For sure. Uh, let's go look at, but yeah, let's answer a cherry's question on how we get into the market. How do we pick yeah, our trades? For sure. So, I mean, the, the go-to answer is we follow our plan, right? I mean, that's, but what is the plan, right? So I'll just go over kind of like my thought process. So I'm just going to be spilling out random stuff and then uh just tell you what i'm looking at so right now i'm just gonna remove all drawings remove all no not indicators just remove everything this is i want to start with the top i start from the top odd yen and the i'll start there actually so how do i select these pairs right here right wait can you guys see glenn is it showing this screen all right cool cool all right so i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and so I used to have around 30 pairs um, when I was first starting to trade. And then I realized that that was too much for me to handle as far as like, I always felt the need to be in the market. I kept cycling through it. You know, like this is literally how I was, how I was cycling through it. And this is kind of important for like anyone who's getting into Forex. Like this is how fast I would be cycling and be like, is this energy? Okay. No, is this energy? Okay. No. And like, it, that's a good and bad thing because you want to be fast in your anal and analyzing, but you also don't want to become addicted where you're just cycling through it. You ever like close Instagram and reopen it? And Instagram it doesn't even have to be Instagram. It has to be any app. You just, you close it. You're like, I need to get off. And then you just reopen it out of habit. That's essentially what I was doing with, you know, 36 pairs. So my point um, where I wanted to go with this is like, I actually try to limit this to 11. I'm random number 11. I just, I tried to do 10, but I found myself adding one more pair every single time. So what I do is actually I'll cycle through my pairs here and see which has been hitting lately. Is it, do I have to, like, as I'm looking at odd yen, am I expecting this to be moving anytime soon? Uh, probably not. So I actually just remove it completely because I already have pound yen. I already have dollar yen. I already have euro yen. So that's three yen pairs exposed. And I already have a lot of Australian uh, USD, AUD, um, Australian dollar, and a lot of the uh, other pairs as well. So in other words, I'm correlated. I'm not missing out if I take a shillion dollar or yen off the market or off of my watch list. So now I'm down to 14. So that's just a, an example so of like talk, um, about, how... talk about that correlation part. Like, what does that even mean? <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, correlation is like if um, I'm in dollar yen, but I want to also be in euro USD, those are correlated, meaning like there's something similar. And what's similar is the USD portion, which is the dollar. So you're going to be risking basically two two times you're risking off of movement on a dollar pair, which is, um, you know, you want to have your heat risk. That's OK if that's your style. Um, you could even only trade one pair. Some traders are really good at just trading like pound USD and euro USD. So it's entirely up to you um, as far as like um, going through these pairs. Um no, that's good. But um, and anyway, so yeah, let's moving on to this position. How do we look at position? So I'll start take it from the top. Odd USD. I want to clear all everything, and I'm just gonna explain everything. Um, what I'm doing. So okay, I'm looking at the hour. I'm looking at the daily. So the daily, I'm recognizing first that okay, we are in a downtrend overall. Where, where's the market coming from? Okay, it's coming from a down movement. Okay, so we're in a bear trend. Okay, sweet. Are we below the EMAs? For, sorry, I'm kind of like it's going too fast. Are we below the EMAs? Yes. Is it showing bearish continuation? Kind of, it's kind of choppy right now just because on the daily create a higher high, didn't break the EMAs, lower low. On 14 June, it didn't create a lower low off of 
13 May. So, you know, you got a month and it didn't break below. So we're kind of limbo right now as far as odd USD goes. So if we're, if I'm looking for odd USD or USD correlated pair, I'm probably going to focus on pound USD or Euro USD. So I looked at daily. I already, I already don't like it, but let's see if there's a quicker move, right? So I'm looking at the four hour now. Okay. So I'm kind of putting this picture together on my analysis, this four hour. Where's my, I'm looking for this. Can you guys see this toolbar? This is amazing toolbar. Right yeah, it's here. good. It's good. All right, cool. So this is the a horizontal array. Okay. Most recent high, most recent low. I usually don't label these, but kind of just, this is, I have all kind of labels over my trading time. So I'll just put, um, what is this called? I'll put this as high. EMA is exponential moving average. So it's just like a mathematical calculation on average, an average of how um, it moved. And you could actually change it. I'll show you on the EMA real quick. So anyway, so template major high or not major. It's not a major one. It's just a low. So we got a high and low. So that's just for uh, clear, clear purposes. Okay, I'm recognizing that it is below the EMAs. I'm recognizing it's coming from a bear trend. Okay, so maybe there's a short position on this trade. So I go down into the hour now. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mark the most recent high and most recent low. So that's a recent high. This is a recent low. It's the same one as these ones. So if you just actually, if I just, um, what is it called? Uh, sink in layout, it'll pop up here too. Saw that. So let me delete it just so you, you can see that. So if I go right click and sync it'll pop up here so it's essentially the same way but it's you know to me it's when i analyze the chart um it's like i'm painting a picture as far as like what i like to see and then i come to the conclusion so i'm drawing in patterns i'm looking at um what am i what am i seeing here so i'm seeing an ascending channel breaking down it's not working out until a little later it's but it still didn't create a lower low but this isn't the most recent low so this is we would have to break this level so that's way too far for me to be waiting like this could take a days or next week so immediately this is off the chart like this is this is a no-go for me so moving on to odd usd or your odd so that that's how fast like i move on and this is all the stuff that's just inputting in my brain on every single pair so okay again where's the daily okay so it's kind of in a bull trend um i like this range here so there's a range we got with the daily right yeah there you go yeah cherry just look at the chat got some awesome people answering glenn john yeah it could be utilized on any frame and then uh coming quick uh for about the ema so i'm gonna double click this on my one hour up here i'm gonna click on this uh blue ema line so you could change in trading view and i think think or swim a lot of, of charting tools you could change the color you could change whatever very select make it as thick as you want as thin as you want um, and you could also change the input. So input is like how long you want it to calculate. So how many bars? So every, this length goes off of the bar. So this is 200 hours, uh, four times two, what is that? That's 800 hours. And then 200 on the daily, that's obviously, you know, that's 200 daily. And then uh, John said that he personally uses the 200 SMA, 20 SMA, and 8 EMA. So SMA is another moving average uh, for anyone listening. SMA is just called a, a simple moving average. Um, I'm not sure the difference, like, but um, I'm sure that's something we, we could get into. I just know what I know. I know what I <laughs> don't know. <laughs> there you go. Um, That's the honesty, bro. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so movement. Euro odd, right? I'm, as I'm looking at Euro odd, I'm seeing that it's really close to this most recent high. It's far away from the recent low. I would want to short this market, but it looks like we are kind of in a, a bull, a temporary bull run. Again, this is a no-go for me. I don't even want to get down to the hour. I don't like the hour. Look at this. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this right here resistance you know this could be considered resistance it's a sand a line in the sand here and then here uh to me it's like it doesn't have much room to go up i got my emas in the way price overall it's a reversal i don't really want to risk a re uh my i'm not willing to risk money on this one and if that's the answer for anything it's an immediate no for me like i'm not willing to risk it so that's a no-go. So your odd is out of the, the box. Um, but yeah, I, I could keep doing this zero pound like immediately, no, too choppy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's a no. 
I could see all this. All this just happened after um, a trade that I missed here. Um, I don't like that. So next one. And then I'll just keep going, man. So, yeah, Glenn, I'll oh, hand no. it over to you. If, um, oh, that's I'll hand it over to you and then send it back to me. I'll show him the journal. Roger. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Um, you know, that the way the speed that Reed is going, I know it was kind of quick. Um, we have this recorded, so you could definitely rewatch it. My bad. No, my but bad. it was my good. It was good because that's real time, too. right? That's the sh that's just showing over time the the amount of screen time that Reed put in. You can't really fake that. You know what I mean? Like you, you it just happens, right? So same for me, right? I'll um, go over through the charts. Let me go share my screen. So yeah, going back to the charts, um, you know, I keep it simple. I just have the Keltner channels indicator on here. That's what you see with the red and the yellow uh, line. I like using bar um, candles or bars. Um, and then I got the ATR here at the bottom, a little bit of volume. So I, I break it down. It's it's pretty simple. I got the, the watch list. You could custom make your list on majority of the platforms out there. Um, so I'll start off on the future side, starting with the S&P. Um, so doing that, S&P 500. Look at the overall, you know, and, and, and just kind of just start your way down, right? You start from the top, bigger time frame. Sometimes I'll zoom out to the weekly and be like, okay, where's this bugger going, right? We topped that at 4808. Um, now we're currently trading around 3,700. You know, the, the a lot of people, if you're a technical um, analysis person, you'll go draw a level here, right? So the previous high of this could, couldn't transform to be the um, next support, right? So that's going to be around 33, 3,400. Um, you know, uh, there's not really, you, you got to take into consideration too, right? Um, like we, we always say, yeah, you just pay attention to price and stuff, but you can't you can't fully ignore the market sentiment right now with what's happening in the the economy. We got inflation rising. Um, you got all these commodity prices going up, this and that. Nothing's really looking out. Um, it's like looking at the ocean. You see that the the the, the, the the freaking waters are just pounding right now. You know what I mean? It's not a good place if you're sending your ship out. Right. Or if you're on a plane, you see the weather is like the weather map is, is messy. You ain't going to go take off, you know. So that's kind of you got to put that in the back of your mind when you're looking at the charts. You know, I'll just look at it um, and be like, OK, yeah, I see that there's going to be a um, we're continuing a downtrend. Um, this week might be a little bit pullback, as you could see with the previous um, moves during this year, we had two weeks of going up three week of a uh, bullish run then it just gets plummeted by the bears you know so then i'll go back to go next chart right um you got the four main um indices which is the nasdaq the s p and the dow they're gonna see have similar price action so i'll just cycle through them right got the dow right here to ym um, a lot of the times, you know, you're going to notice a lot of them follow the Russell, I believe, in, in like direction. Even though the Russell isn't as volatile as the other ones, Russell, for some reason, has a, uh, you know, the, they kind of just follow. Well, from my my um, observations, you know, so from there, I'll jump to gold. I like gold the way it moves. Um, right now, it's just choppy. No real... Um, nice setups going through you know when i say choppy you're just gonna see just like these wicks on both ends up and lower than just a lot of movement within a period you know and so right there you like i already drew some lines here so i'm just gonna stay out of it i'm looking for moves i'm looking for trends i'm looking for run uh nice swings you know um same for uh natural gas it's been it peaked out 9.66. Now we have a nice dump, man. That is a nice dump. So I'll stay out of that for now. Um, then, then I'll jump to the uh, forex side, you know. And I do have a few pairs that I particularly pay attention to, um, as for the forex, because there's a ton. Look at all this. There's a lot. There's a lot, right? 
And so I go to the ones that I'm familiar with that historically that I've traded and I've performed well, right? And so odd dollar, it would be one of them. Check it out and see any particular setups, right? When you when you start developing your trading system, your edge, you know, when you're browsing through these charts, it's almost like flashcards, you know? It's like, boom, you see it? Nah, next. That's that's kind of where you want to be because it does take time, dude. I used to sit in, I mean, I still sit in front of this, but the, the screen time was, was a lot, was a lot back then, a lot more. Um, but of course, you do get faster with time. Euro USD, I don't see a nice favorable setup there. Just got to wait. Got to sit and wait. NZDCAD, I think Reed was talking about this one. Um, NZD Yen, so, you know, not much crazy, like just ready to go type of movement, you know. And so with the uh, thousand charts, thousand times for speed. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of just a breakdown. Like I'll do this either at the beginning of the day or the end of the day just to see where the markets have moved. And then, you know make your decision there we're like okay this this mark did this market pop up and gave me a fair favorable um setup okay yes or no no okay next right so move on to that don't spend too much time i mean like i said earlier when i find myself cycling through um the markets repeatedly that's that's uh for me historically that's a sign that i'm gonna enter an unwanted trade <laughs> That's going to be a little bit of gambling, but you know, that's something I personally just, you know, once I cycle through it once, if I do miss a trade, I can't be, I'm not going to beat myself up for that, you know, you know, and it goes back to your psychology. This is where, where it plays in a little bit. Even if you're not, you're not trading, you're going to see like, oh, that was my setup. Oh, but I wasn't in. Why? You know? And so, um, those are the things you, you, people may encounter when we go through this so yeah check out the uh yeah yeah so okay i'll show how i journal so i used to do this old school man i used to do the excel um so this is actually the new new oh my god hold on stall it stall them <laughs> stall it bro <laughs> well he works that out man where he works it out journaling journaling old no, i wanted to yeah i'm gonna show you guys how i used to journal and then I'm, i want to sh uh, show like how i've what have added over time, bro? And, huh? You can't get as old school as this, yes. bro. Yeah, true. Okay. I threw, see, that's the thing. I did have it, but I have no proof. I threw yeah, it all away. You threw it away. <laughs> threw it away, guys. Don't let your ego get the best of you. That's probably I threw away years worth of stuff just because of my Oops. outrageous ego. Anyway, so let's share this screen. Show you guys how I uh, used to journal. So this is um. 21 journal so i used to basically get stats like what a what the um what is it called um what the what computers and algorithms and systems already do so this is just an example of a month you know i would take like okay what days am i trading um how many did i trade take on that day what was the average percentage of the for the month um you know, so it's like these stats on the right, these like columns on the right. Okay, the OBL stands for um, overall bullish. Um, what is the the master market condition here? I have it. You know, so I actually manually typed in like a lot of this stuff, right? And so then I I came across. So this is the how I used to um, do it. And by the way, it, it used to look way more rudimentary than this. Like imagine, imagine just this section here right just your you got your trade your pair you got the direction it's going in you got the date what day i placed it on the time i entered or the when it went live i obviously i rounded it up or it rounded up for me automatically i have the stop loss oh yeah i have the description of it here too so stop loss numbered in pips the result of trade break even before screenshot what was i looking at before so it showed this this is like my analysis before oh wow that went a hundred percent against me so looking back this is what this is a let's walk through this right it's so good, this was a horrible trade right now in this day and age if i saw myself trying to place this trade i'd probably sat myself 
because it's an overall what is what trend is this guys this is a bull trend like it's so easy to see right yeah. but i went short on this what a bro yeah. i don't even know i want to stop myself right now just for doing this stop but before you, you know this, <laughs> this was uh what year was this um when i did this this was was this a, oh my god this is january 2021 you know so i mean like a lot of has happened in just a year alone blame covid um but <laughs> and that's what's that's what's so important right you, you take the before screenshot or after screenshot this is obviously i didn't get a chance to do it before but uh it's just for documentary purposes so you can look back and you if you're not looking back i, I read this really funny quote if you look back at your history and you don't feel embarrassed that means you didn't grow and so that's a really same thing with trading if you look back at your your shitty trading and you don't recognize any failures or faults of your own then you're not growing so i mean uh to call myself a dummy i think we we on the right page huh? <laughs> <laughs> so can, are I you able to zoom in are you able to zoom in on the oh uh, yeah sorry zoom? can you yeah. guys actually make that yeah. out or not even no yeah so um i think we have a, a gen generic template in the mighty networks for you guys to just copy and download yeah it there's a generic just, template for sure it's gonna look like this i believe right not as uh yeah let's try yeah. and go to it yeah, let's go see. Where's it at? Uh, uh should be under topics and then the resources. Yeah, check resources. Out. Downloadable files right Downloadables. here. Boom. So you got the uh, a beginner Courtesy. journal. It's very Courtesy. rudimentary. Courtesy of Reed. Yeah. So like it's like a template that I used to used to know. Used oh, it's to... not even knowing. Oh no, you gotta fix the link, oh, bro. Can I even? Okay, we gotta fix that that's our that's our fault oh hey see we were able to test it obviously no one downloaded it because no one told us <laughs> uh no nah, it's okay um but um so that's how i used to journal right this is the way excel um do you is there any questions on this one uh yeah. would you be able to make the journal screen bigger oh yeah sorry yeah, Jerry. No, yeah, my it, bad i just did it sorry yeah yeah, yeah so. good call good call um so this is how i used to do it you know i just put after notes i started you know I stopped writing a lot just because it was uh I should have but I guess I accidentally placed stop profit. So like all this, like these are ideas. Um I was on order, so it's family was here, market's still warming up. So, anyways, all that stuff, just those are the notes that you wanna be writing. So I'll show you now. Um these are like all my accounts, my bad. Um close this. And we'll get into that. I'll show you guys this. Okay. Let me do a quick magic. Magic, magic. I like Steve. <laughs> okay. Close. So many windows. Okay, here we go. So this is called Trader Sync. This is like the, the how my new journal looks. And I just been basically I upload all the legit transactions and I throw it in here. And it pulls off all the data that I just showed you guys in Google Excel. So you got the freeway, which is Google Excel. It takes time, but you know, it, it works. You could do that. And I did that since 2017. Or you could, you know, pay and upgrade and go through Trader Sync. Do you have to do this? Absolutely not. That's why I wanted to show you guys the Google Excel. And then there's a lot of stats that like Glenn, like he doesn't care to know. But me as like a stat guy, like I need, I want to know these things, you know? <laughs> and, but um, it's cool because like my Forex funds, oh, sorry, my Forex funds, um, FTMO, FTMO, the uh, the major prop firms, they kind of give you a sample data too of what like TraderSync is doing. So I'm going to just go in and continue showing you guys like it shows the win percentage, the profit factor, like average win to loss uh, per position. So this is this what you're seeing is a two hundred dollar account. And so like made twenty two dollars and then it just shows the overall. And this is just for twenty twenty two year to date. It's not past dates because this is i've been trading this one since 2019 so if i actually just close you guys i just want to be completely transparent show you guys all that red because the reds is what make us as traders you know so let this guy load so look at this man look at look how at like that. red this really is right that's a nice red and chart. so <laughs> i kind of wanted to talk to you about my psychology and all this so i opened it uh back in the day i don't know how much i'm sure i could pull it up through a wanda but 
All I know is I kept adding funds. Like I kept refueling, adding flames or fuel to the flames, right? And I just kept burning my my income. I use TraderSync, great tool, free version. Yeah. yeah, no. So Sam just mentioned that TraderSync is a great tool and that uh, there is a free version. So yeah, you don't have to pay for a lot of these products. But anyway, moving on. So I just kept putting, um, don't find, I want to share my lesson. So like to avoid you from you guys doing it is don't be adding funds if you lost, like just, reduce your risk and then try to pull it back naturally because that risk percentage and that risk size, that's what's going to pull for the prop firms. The prop firms want to see the percentage. They don't care how much dollars you make. They, yeah. they matter about percentage. I mean, yeah. based on, based on the initial account, you know what I mean? And correct. So there's a chart out there just to butt in. Um, you know, if you lose 5%, you're going to need to make what, like, I forget what the calculation is like 7% or eight, 10% to make, to be break even or something, you know what I mean? So it goes on as you go um, through the the losses, you know. And so uh, going back to back to you. Rude. Oh yeah, yeah. No, thanks for adding that, man. Yeah. So like th it, this one, so it just shows everything. I just wanted to kind of walk you guys through like all of this and kind of like um almost growth too. And I wanted to show you how to um actually upload how it works, you know. So you could. Look at all these columns that you could sort and i'm sure it depends on like what package you buy and like what you actually get but um anyway this is my 2022 and i'm on, and i took two trades i took a loss right um on kiwi usd so i wanted to show you how i updated in real time so go to my forex this is the account okay time zone is hawaii we go show transactions it shows the date Oh, this just shows the week. Yeah. So, and then I could export it and it exports. So I'm going to go back to Trader Sync and I'm going to go to Pro Portfolio and add import trades right here. Boom. And then this is like directly from the source. So I'm not like rounding numbers. I'm not cheating myself. Um, so that's it keeps me accountable. In other words, you know, like it keeps me accountable. I'm not like trying to make my my stats look good for the gram or whatnot, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so up here, top right, says on the top right, it says you have successfully successfully imported one trade. All right, so let's go check out this overview now. Let's see how one, that one trade affected, and it was a bigger trade because I added more funds too. So yeah, now we're in the negative. So last total of ten dollars for the year so i mean it's just because i added more funds it's a, it was a loss but i'll show you on trading view um how that worked out so i used i added 5k to the account total so one percent is sixty dollars now so it's a total of 6k 6k in the position in uh in the forex the reason being is because the stock market and and crypto they're all like shot right now so i withdrew some of those funds percent needed to cover chart don't back hold yeah 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 sam just posted that recovery chart on the percentage that you need yeah there you go there you go oh good there stuff. okay Download i'll show that. can you guys see it print that yeah yeah right there it's good right here thanks yeah thanks um that's it so if you lose five percent, you need a five point three gain to be break even. You lose fifty percent, you need five one hundred percent return. So didn't um, we talk about like why is it like what is it inflation? Is it it was it was a combination? Commission? I believe it was it's a uh, combination of fees. Right? You know, correct like, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think there was a combination of stuff. You got the fees, you got the um maybe the inflation and then you got to rec the recuperate the time lost while being in a yeah, it, it, it's mostly to do with the price action so right. say you have a, a ten dollar position and it goes down to five dollars you need to right. double that five dollars to get back to ten dollars yeah right versus if you have eight dollars you only need two dollars to get back oh it's a hundred percent return off of the five dollars of the okay yeah got of it. the, the current price part. Yep, current price. Current price. Ah, that makes so much sense now. Okay. Simple, man. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. The Appreciate one person that. can change your life, man. We just with <laughs> the words. No, thanks for that. Uh, On the real. Yeah, yeah. So, like, what Reed just did, how long did it take you? What, three minutes to, to download your transactions from your broker, Awanda, and then 
click yeah. a few buttons, upload it straight to Trader Sync, right? Yeah, like within a few minutes. Just like that, right? And, and so it doesn't what, matter how many. Like you could trade all month. And it'll pull the. It'll import it and it'll go real fast. And how often? How often do you do that? Uh, um, like once a month. Lately, it's been once a week. Once a week. Okay, so by yeah. the end of the week. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. end, okay. end of the week I'll be up. I'm updated now for for that aspect. So. The aspect that I'm trying to improve upon is actually writing the journals that I used to write in on my Google Excel. Like, okay, I took Kiwi USD. What was I thinking? What was my situation? Um, what kind of frame of mind I was in? I want to really log into that now and start really digging into my own psyche because I I know I have a winning strategy. I just need to right. to um, hone it hone it in. But um, I'll just finish covering up Kiwi CAD. So Kiwi CAD, I is sixty dollars is one percent. I risked twenty five dollars. I lost like twenty four ninety five or something. So twenty five dollars, and I put so that's half a percent. That's half a percent of sixty dollars, and that's where that description is there. So it's not really a like a lot on my trader sync. I know it'll come back, um, but other than that, that's um, that's all I have for now. That's what I just wanted to show you guys that trading the the tools that I, we use and like that has helped me in many ways which is yeah. trader sync and just journaling and uh tv so yeah no that that's awesome dude i mean that's a good thing because it's you're kind of just showing the steps you know you get in the, the charts you place a trade win or lose you get the result you do it's documented can't be ducking from it i used to have a little issue with that of just like i just duck my losses oh it's not there what are you talking oh about? yeah everyone throw, throw does, it a statement man. You know, yeah. broker statement comes in natural. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, there's a whole process, right? So he read downloads it by the end of the week. You know, maybe he spends a, a few hours of just, you know, looking at it, going through uh, the thoughts and the thought process behind those trades and the outcome and the results and see if there's a pattern, if there's a place to improve upon or, you know, if there they're stuck like i've been in it like i got in stuck i'd be doing the same thing for weeks on end and um you know it would take a lot of time and it would take uh just a you get the practice of it right the practice of it and so i hope you guys got good value tonight we are at 8 p.m man i appreciate everybody joining in tonight man it's a good crowd right here good people um but yeah i mean hopefully we we provide some value with you guys and you know thanks for joining in hope you guys have a great night if you have any questions right any oh yeah hey we'll sit down for like a few minutes yeah. any questions if or you any guys last gotta bounce is fine any last yeah. statements yeah <laughs> yeah thanks for tuning in john yeah. always, always good having you yeah yeah john you trade options futures which one was them um no i don't do um options I know nothing about options. Yeah. All right, right, right. Gotcha, good, gotcha. Good. Yeah. Me but uh, mainly, mainly I'm a um, U.S. stock market swing trader. Um, getting getting to scalping for the past couple of years. Yeah. Um, trying different markets because the sleep's been killing me, man. The time zone, as we spoke some time ago, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, but the past several months, I've just been trying to get my head right. You know, I got mass smoke. You know, blew, blew another account. So. <laughs> Um, are you, are but, you uh, trying out Forex or are you s just going stocks still? I'm trying. I remember last time you any, mentioned you were trying Forex. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying any market basically that allows me to trade my style, which is bring your scalp into a swing or basically any, any market, any pair. I don't care even what it is because I'm a yeah. price action trader. As long as it has volatility, I'm, I'm good with that. Oh, volatility. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's go. That. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's in the works. You know, I, it, it takes time. Right now, again, like I said, just trying to work on my sleep. I'm studying Al Brooks' work, which is a price action guy. He's a five-minute um, scalper off of the uh, uh, the ES um, Nasdaq futures. Yeah. yeah. Have, have you ever yeah. read? Uh, I think it's New Market Wizards by Mark Douglas. No, not Mark Douglas. Um, Schwager. Schwager. Jack Schwager. Schwager? Jack. No, I haven't read that yet. I read that yet. Yeah. I so think um, I, I have like. 20 books haven't finished. So <laughs> <laughs> audiobook, man. Audiobook and yeah, like yard work or something. That's how add it to yeah. the list. Now, nah, but I think, yeah, in one of the market wizards, they talk about scalpers, right, Glenn? Like 
I yeah, mean, I think basically that- the reason that's the reason why he does it is like he tries to find successful people of all likes of trading. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that the new one, um, that the book that Reed's talking about, it's the new market. Un, it's called the Unknown Market Wizards. Uh, Jack Schweiger put that book together over COVID. Um, it was just a, I think, you know, he's been putting off and put making a book. If you haven't read his micro, Market Wizards series, you know that thing is like one of the must reads when you're getting into the market, right? So he he did these um, interviews during COVID and uncovered a lot of just unknown guys who has these phenomenal track records and they all trade all different types of styles, all different types of personalities. Um, some were trade. I think there's two or three of them from uh, the same prop firm, but they had different styles and they were all successful, you know. And so, yeah, definitely 100% recommend, like, you're going to read that. I would, like, I think I read the book, like, seven times already, man. Wow, like, dude. Yeah, definitely. Dang it. You know? You know, um, well, I just want to bring up this story. I don't know if it's from Market Wizards, but one thing I know I saw it on YouTube is that uh, there's this trader, nonchalant, like, regular neighborhood. He had a kid, took him to school, ha- drove, like, a Honda Civic. Bra had millions. He's a millionaire trader. Trades only for like five hours of the day or something like that. Because he wants time to pick up his son from school. So he picks him up and comes home. But like the reason why he was getting interviewed is because like when we first get into trading, who are we looking at? We're looking at the guys with the Lambos and the Rollies and the gold chain money and like girls and everything, right? That lifestyle. But like the real lifestyle is like a lot of these traders, they're just living passive, chill lives. They're like, I don't want people to know I got the money, you know, because yeah. <laughs> just yeah. it's crazy. It's so I mean, that's just one thing. Like, that's the market wizard right there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, the, the common theme among what you guys are, are talking about here is I think it's very important. And, and that is having an identity. Because in the beginning, when you first start trading, you're just trying to absorb everything that you can. But down the road, what you're really trying to do is having your own style, having your own identity, and it has to match your goals, uh, whether it's financial or, or, or you know, what you, how you live on a daily basis, right? And that's not easy, dude. Like the 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 create the creating aspect of it, um, making it your own, right? Uh, that takes time. But um, like reading the Market Wizard series, man, yeah, you could really identify a lot of good good traders really good traders mm-hmm. and kind of pick and choose which one you think um uh and mesh it all together you know if, if you have to but if yeah, you whatever do resonates that, yeah whatever, whatever resonates but you what you have must do is study these guys in depth at least six months to a few years uh, you, you know what i'm saying that just takes time it takes yeah. time yeah yeah it takes time yeah. i mean question even though a lot of the traders mentioned in the books they're all successful but really um validate you know for so let validate for yourself um whether that strategy you understand it why it works like go beyond that like what um john was saying you know lots of uh due diligence and back testing their strategies seeing how that thing fits you if it does make sense i think for me that was a, like a big question you know just real quick to share my experience it took me about a year and a half to find the style of trading that fit me you know and it wasn't until i for one like even though i was i was doing very bad poorly at trading i didn't give up you know i always uh, continue to learn more i'm like okay what am i missing what am i missing and then that's when i came across the style um of trading um and boom like that just totally flipped it just like what are you you know, you like you clean your dirty windshield, man. That's it. You're able to see. You're able to see. So, you know, I just want to share that with you guys. And, you know, hopefully it, ta- it doesn't take longer than that. <laughs> hopefully it takes some time, but definitely um, look at it in the long term. Yeah, I'll we'll say post one, more, I, I, one more book. What's that? What's that? Yeah, and you know, among the books that you guys are talking about, what what I think is also very important, too, is not just identifying styles, but um, what's the common theme among all these guys the market wizard series or chat with traders podcast or any kind of podcast that talks about traders is that if you if you're newer what you got to really focus on too is identifying how do you got these guys think yeah because across the board no matter what style they they you know go with 
these guys have a common theme among how they think. You know, they're relentless. Um, it's all a system with an edge, how they manage the risk, and the psychology roller coaster that they go through, man, is insane. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's a reason why people say like this is more a lot more tougher than training for Olympic, you know, being an Olympic athlete. <laughs> Because it's competition, man, is 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 brutal. Intense. But um, how how they think, man, that that's gold right there. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think you know, for someone who's just starting out, um, you know, like myself, you're gonna have to just get past the normal surface thing, what you see on the charts, what you see in their bank accounts, whatever the lifestyle. You have to go beyond that, and like what John was saying, you're eventually gonna want to understand how they think. You're eventually uh, you want to figure out okay how why did they make that decision how can they be so confident in that trade you know the the George Soros trade he put one or two billion dollars on that big short you know how the heck do you come up with that much confidence in your system you're trading to make that call man to be like you know what boom let me go hit that one billy in the market I can't even fathom that but yeah man i mean this is, this is good stuff um i hope you guys got good value read you any last words man oh man no i'm we could stay here so all many. night like, guys, as but... you guys are talking i have all these thoughts and i'm like yeah 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 and then it, they kind of go out when they're like read your turn <laughs> but no like, i mean i uh... want to hit a couple more charts after you know the session and stop recording i do got a pretty good chart on psychology uh yeah. what i've been looking at right now it's actually pretty good <laughs> yeah i like that um but as far yeah jack schrager john he specifically says like that so in one of his in interviews with him, michael cavell he talks about how um well one is every trader needs to show him his journal so we gotta be comfortable and confront ourselves if we want to be like a market wizard and by then too he mentions like there's an underlying belief system in all traders and you know that that's kind of what you touched upon john is like there's a certain self-confidence for them like it could be a mother in new Bruns brunswick or whatever and like they're they're just living this humble lifestyle but it's that mentality that that little wife has or that little mom has you know so anyways man yeah that's uh that's all i got thanks for yeah. tuning in everyone yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Sam, you said you wanted to share some real quick, but I mean, you guys yeah, real, free to real quick on a just psychology on why some trades work. I oh, think yeah. it's a uh, it's pretty valuable. I mean, I I caught a pretty mm -hmm. good uh thirty percent move this morning. You know, within ten minutes, just because of psychology, uh, it's figuring out you know what everybody's doing. Um, and then now I got a, a pretty good idea what I want to do tomorrow uh, based off the same chart and idea. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys here real quick. Uh, can you guys see this chart here? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So why this thing popped up and squeezed, you had Apple and Amazon uh, go with the big pop-up um, that kind of jumped out here. But psychology-wise, you probably had a lot of people short here, right? They're coming in and the market opens up here. They're panicking. So you get them squeezed out. Same time here. Um, yeah, all this volume, all this sell volume, putting this all down. So now anybody who's been buying up here, they're now stuck. Yeah. Uh, so when they wake up in the morning, they're going to be negative and they may start panicking and you may get that big drop down or Jay Powell may say the market and uh, say something amazing during his testimony, you know, rip up. <laughs> it's about being flexible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. Let me ask you, since we're kind of on the topic, you, you said you already know your plan tomorrow and you sounded confident in that, right? Yes. So based on this chart, like, what do you see that you're like, oh yeah, I'm confident in my plan tomorrow. All right. Like, so price action today. Based on price action today, I know these guys are stuck. Yeah. When they wake up in the morning, Jay Powell has some stuff going on. Say, hey, things are awesome. We're going to get out of this. Recession is going away. You may get a squeeze on, and then these guys may start trying to get out because, hey, they're back holding, or Jay Powell may just be, you know, messing around and everything will start fading out. So I'll start taking some positions in this area here when these guys are panicking and trying to get out of their positions. Or we wake up down here, same thing, hit this position here, and we'll 
probably bounce around and kind of hit here. It's all based off the volume and the flow. Uh, mm -hmm. I also use other data as well, um, such as dark pool, what the big hedge funds are doing. And they just been just dumping, selling dumping. every day, just dumping. The only thing that kind of gives me pause on it, uh, let me see, am I in the dark pool? Uh, it's, uh, okay, so, and more confidence here is somebody sold $750 million uh, at the bid uh, in open market today. <laughs> That's a huge position uh, to sell out. So I use a lot more data. Um, put option totally increase at the end of the day. So it's all confluence on my um, strategy. I love so it. I can hit dark pulls here and you can see all the money that's been traded by hedge funds or banks is all in that area. And we are well below that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, that's a pretty cool tool. Is it, that this tool free right here? Uh, no, this there's a free version, but I pay for this. Um, you can do the trial. It's uh, just a uh, trading ticks. Um, I use it throughout the day while I'm, while I'm watching a trade um, throughout the day, I can see, you know, what funds are really doing, what the flow is doing. Um, you can see when they're buying calls and how price reaction, when you have more calls than you do have with puts, when your puts increase and your calls are decreasing, your price is typically going to drop shortly, uh, some short term plays. Uh, but at the same time, you also got to be uh, careful with the position sizing of the big funds are doing. Mm -hmm. So you have some 385 calls that have been building a position since the 16th and this 400 put closed their position today um, or actually on Friday. And so now they're, so it could rally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of data out there. Um, you just develop a thesis based off of that. Yeah. Yeah, wow. you show you show yeah. you know people one chart they see six different things right so, oh, yeah absolutely I mean, yeah the same thing you could have two different uh types of traders right profit on the same chart and one could go long and one could go short it really depends right. on price action two, two traders could enter the exact same trade and one would lose and one would win <laughs> like that's All how the crazy the market is you know it's clockwork <laughs> yeah so like I said, I took this position uh, out the open. I mean, we got killer volume and Apple and Amazon were, were rushing it. So I have my levels drawn out here. So uh, my rules are as soon as I hit my 20%, I'm out regardless. Yeah, yeah. Nice. What's happening. So, so now I'm just watching uh, for the morning. I'll wake up extra early to uh, see the price action at the open. Mm. And uh, I'll take readjust my thesis from there. Boom. Boom. Nice. You see that? There you go. Very nice, man. That's uh, dedication. That's hard worker. That's grit. Waking up extra early. You know, that's um, good luck, man. I, I don't do that. <laughs> that's good. Well, I love I, I'm in and out. You know, so I, like yeah. I said, I woke up. I was I in. It. and I was like, hey, I made my percentage so I don't stay around and try to trade this chop. I'm going back to bed. That's right, <laughs> that's right man. That's smart. That's right. Smart decision. Yeah, yeah. I see it. I see it. Yeah, man. We'll see. Um, we're hopefully expecting some good moves and you know the spy and all that this week. So continuing on with just you know the movement of the market. So yeah, man. I mean, it's good stuff. Thanks for sharing, everyone. Yeah, good stuff. I think yeah, everyone's probably providing value. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. But uh, all right, all. I yeah. think we could call it. Yeah, 30 minutes, 20 minutes over. Appreciate all of you guys. Have a all great you. night. Thanks. Choo.